So we've really screwed up the planet, huh? What with our industrial revolution and other questionable decisions, it's too bad we don't have someplace else to go, like Mars. Now, the idea of colonizing Mars is nothing new. It's been a well-explored topic in science and science fiction for years. But if we could go as far as to alter the Earth's atmosphere, why not give the altering of atmospheres on other planets a go? One software engineer named Kevin Gill used a program he wrote, some graphic software, and a facts-based imagination to show what a terraformed Mars might look like. Pretty, isn't it? There are a number of theories on how to terraform the red planet. The first step generally involves an attempt to raise the temperature. And not just a bit. We'll have to warm Mars from negative 80 degrees Celsius, the freezing point of CO2, to a balmy negative 25 degrees Celsius. Today, the Rockaboom Foundation for Studying the Altering of Planet Climates announces the result of a $40 grant allowed toward researching the three most popular hypothetical ways to heat up Mars. Number one. Lightweight-ish mirrors in space redirecting the sun's energy at Mars polar ice caps. Christopher P. McKay published a paper called Making Mars Habitable in the journal Nature, outlining a two-step approach where the first order of business is to warm Mars with a big-ass release of carbon dioxide. The ice caps also happen to be full of it. CO2, that is. Mirror, mirror, out in space. How the... did we get you there in the first place? These mirrors would likely need a diameter of over 250 kilometers, tipping the scales around 200,000 tons if built here on Earth. Because of the logistics involved in getting these huge mirrors out there, there is talk of how they could potentially be made from materials found in space. Number two, smash an ammonia-filled asteroid into the planet. If you could catch and attach rockets to asteroids, over the course of a decade or so, you might be able to redirect one's path to crash into the planet. The collision could potentially yield over 100 million megawatts of power, enough energy to power the entire Earth for 10 years, or even charge a teen's iPhone for a week. But all of that would only raise the temperature three degrees, son of a... So it would obviously take many collisions over many years, keeping Mars uninhabitable for centuries. Aerospace engineer Robert Zubrin, co-author of The Case for Mars, The Plan to Settle the Red Planet and Why We Must, feels that Mars needs to be transformed by colonists. So directing an asteroid into the surface of the planet is probably not the way to go here. He also rules out the actual hydrogen bombs that some folks have proposed. Hydrogen bombs bad. Got it. Number three, raising greenhouse gases. Now that's something we ought to be pretty good at. Zubrin feels that we just need to build some factories on Mars, and we do it with stuff we find hanging around the planet. In his Mars Direct plan to have a sustained human life on Mars, he proposes we use the Martian atmosphere for fuel and Martian soil for the minerals used in construction, just like on Earth. Research into greenhouse gases shows fluorine and sulfur may trigger the most effect toward warming conditions. They're like the super greenhouse gases, and they both already exist on Mars. Well, that's pretty handy. Now, some naysayers will claim that solar winds will just whip away any atmosphere we create due to the planet not having a magnetic shield like we do here on Earth. But according to some folks at NASA, it is believed that Mars did in fact once have a magnetosphere, and there are some spots on the planet with magnetic umbrellas. So maybe it's not enough, and perhaps the planet would need a full coverage magnetic field. As for these other three theories, we're confident that there's some better ones out there, and we're proud to say that we've submitted for an additional $15 to further investigate. Until then, I'm Kagan, and this is Rocket Boom.